All in, and uh, they're off uh, for the Prince of Wales' stakes. Group one contest over a mile and a quarter hunting horn in the dark blue was one of the first to get away as they make the downhill run towards Swindley Bottom with Deirdre the White Sleeves racing handily and magical purple jacket for Ryan Moore on the inner. Now Frankie's got Crystal Ocean yellow cap in the leading half of the field and just a length off the pace. Zabil Prince in a spotted jacket tucks away towards the inner as they bear right-handed. Shadowed by a French Raider Valtgeist in a red jacket, a fairly steady pace. There's a break of a length and a half to Sea of Class Yellow Silks Racing last but one, and Desert Encounter is at the tail of the field. Making the ascent now, out of Swindley Bottom, inside the final seven furlongs, and Hunting Horn just lifting the tempo. Moves on by a couple lengths to Crystal Ocean, heading the pursuit. Magical is just a length further back in third. Then there's a break of two lengths to Deirdre with the white sleeves wide of Zabil Prince against the running rail. Valtgeist in a red jacket is alongside Desert Encounter, and Sea of Class has dropped to the tail as they pass halfway, and she would be about eight lengths off the leader, Hunting Horn. So heading for the last half mile, in the Prince of Wales is stakes, Hunting Horn leading Crystal Ocean into the turn. They're now two lengths ahead of Magical and Ryan Moore, Purple Jacket. He's just beginning to squeeze the filly along as they swing back towards the last three furlongs. Deirdre with the white face is on the outer of Zaville Prince, followed by Valkgeist, Desert Encounter, ridden along Sea of Class, Yellow Jacket, still sitting at the back of the field. Down the straight they come. Frankie now brings Crystal Ocean down the centre, coming to take on Hunting Horn. They're still over two lengths ahead of Magical, who's being driven firmly purple cap by Ryan Moore. The group of three up ahead are a little way clear of Valkgeist. Sea of class on the extreme right. A furlong and a half to go. Crystal Ocean with Magical now switching to come and have a crack at him. They've got over two lengths clear from Hunting Horn. Crystal Ocean in front passing the furlong. Magical has got within a length. Can she get past Crystal Ocean edging right, leading off a true line. Magical is continuing to pester, but Crystal Ocean is doing enough and takes the Prince of Wales who stakes under Frankie. Magical in second, Valkgeist in third, and Hunting Horn was fourth with Sea of Class back in fifth ahead of Deirdre. Well, Michael, he won the Hardwick last year, third in the King Edward the seventh year before, second to Cracksman in the Champion Stakes. He's got his group one. He has got his group one. <laughs> and Frankie de Tory riding Crystal Ocean is a bit of an omen because if you remember quite a few years ago, Michael Stout was struggling to win a ledger. Who rode the ledger winner? Frankie de Tory on Conduit. Ah, so he's he's the man to go to. He's the man to go to anyway. Second <laughs> second win on the card here in the pouring rain, beating Magical and Ryan Moore in a thrilling finish, Freddie. Yeah, it's a very very tough finish. Two top class horses, but this just proven Chris Lotion is probably worth a stallion now, isn't he, Michael? Oh yeah, for sure. You know, and Sir Evelyn has put a lot into racing, as we all know. He has been trying to win a Group One with this horse, and finally. Poets word spoilt the party on one occasion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you have Michael Stout and Ryan Moore battling against each other, I have to choose one. I have to choose Michael Stout. Sorry to see Ryan get beat, but I'm very, very happy for Crystal Ocean. And he's re related to some superb horses as well. This horse, Hill Star, one of those as well. And Crystal Capella, he's by Sea the Stars, no less. So, I mean, he's going to have a serious job when he does go to stud. Yeah, he should. And it, the mile and a quarter, people are doubting. Will he have enough speed for the mile and a quarter? It's a stiff mile and a quarter here at Ascot. And perhaps it's good that he really sees a mile and a half. Because when Magical came at him, he kept on finding. And because he's a mile and a half, ho mile and a half horse, he could find that extra stamina to keep going. I was a little bit worried at one point, and Freddie was saying, oh, he's all over the place because he's swerving, but he kept going. Yes, um, but Frankie had him obviously parked up in box seat, and Frankie knew that his horse would stay. Like you've just said, Michael, he, he stays very well. He stays a mile and a half, and on these conditions, he has proven himself on soft ground beforehand, but these are obviously different conditions altogether. This is proper soft ground, and take nothing away from the winner. He's just going a little bit wandering about under Frankie there. Look, as soon as he puts the pressure on, Frankie pulls a stick through as well. Um, but I think he's just looking for a bit of company as such. And, uh, yeah, you can't take it away from him. He's a worthy winner. And, Freddie, looking at Sea of Class, it was will they, won't they, will they run her, but the ground is going to have changed and gone against her. Do you think William Haggis will be disappointed they decided to run? 
Uh, I'm not sure. We'd probably have to ask from him uh, if we can, possibly. Um, look, I think that uh, she had to come out. They had to get a run into her. James Doyle was pretty much hands and heels on her, and uh, I'm sure the filly will come on from the run. And I tell you what, the Japanese racing fans can go to bed now because Deirdre has run her race. They switched this race. It was due to be run half at, well, at 4.20, but they brought it forward so this race could be shown in Japan before midnight, and it has been as well. And uh, they're probably f feeling pretty smug that they're not actually at Ascot. Look at the <laughs> rain there with Frankie. And Frankie could probably get hundreds of win, thousands of winning photographs um, to put on his, his, da in his downstairs loo on the wall. This one would be rather unusual because you wouldn't see many Ascot victories in the pouring rain, Michael. More like Chilton up. <laughs> <laughs> the, thing, the thing is with Frankie is, look, he's one of a kind. Then there will never be another one like him. He's Mr. Ascot. He's, he's the type of jockey you can put him on a plane, drop him off wherever, and he just performs. And uh, that's very, very rare. So we're lucky to have him. We sure are. And uh, yeah, he's uh, still going strong. He rides the big occasion better than anybody else. And he does seem to be seven pounds better at Ascot than he is anywhere else, Michael. Yeah, and just looking at the lad leading him in, if I'm not mistaken, he's from Italy as well. Ah. Michael Stout has many languages up at that stable. I think he's from Italy. Great stuff. Well, they'll be able to have a little chat on the way back in in their native tongue as Frankie moves those two pairs of goggles. I don't think two pairs would have been enough today, Freddie. Uh, I don't think so. I think I would have pulled a lot down, to be honest, just to be able to see something. But, um, yeah, severe conditions here. Yeah, look at that, Frankie de Torre. Whew. You can see there's a bit of relief there as well, but he loves the big occasion. Great for this sport, isn't he? And you can see Crystal Ocean just coming in there on his left lead. He's really stretching. His tongue is lolling out in this pouring rain. And he just keeps finding to beat Magical. And let's give some credit to the runner-up because Magical is a tough filly and she keeps pulling it out on the big day as well. And she is improving. If you go back into Magical's history, Magical ran in the, in the arc last year, a 40 to 1 shot, finished down the field in the arc. Got closer to Enable in the Breeders' Cup, yes, but got three quarters of a length beaten in the Breeders' Cup. But the two horses that came third and fourth in that race were 80 to 1 and 100 to 1 outsiders. American horses on turf, which you know, Freddie, the English horses will beat the American horses on turf every day. Yes. So that wasn't fantastic form. Even the three wins this year, not fantastic form, but it's obvious that Magical is improving. Just a little bit of a stat for you, just Freddie there, 62nd winner at Royal Ascot for Frankie de Tory. It's 80 for Sir Michael Stout. What a record and the fourth win in this race for the jockey and trainer together. Frankie's won this on Dubai Millennium, Fantastic Light, Rewilding and Sir Michael Stout, Hard Fought Stagecraft and Poet's Word. What records, what horses and what longevity. Frankie treats the crowd to a flying dismount. His second of the day will have more reaction after this break.